just blew up in the air, and then we saw two fireballs go down to the, to the water. The sea is on fire. 230 lives are lost. Eyewitnesses give a frightening account. T-3800 exploded right in front of me. I knew right away that there were no survivors, and uh, it was kind of a sickening feeling. We do not know what caused this tragedy. I want to say that again. We do not know as of this moment. It's a hot summer evening at John F. Kennedy Airport in New York. Transworld Airlines Flight 800 is almost an hour late for departure. The Boeing 747 Jumbo Jet is carrying 212 passengers, many of them now growing impatient for the flight to Paris to get underway. The reason for the delay is that a piece of luggage is on board, but its owner is not. This is a red flag for airline security. The bombing of Air India Flight 182 a decade ago was a wake-up call for the entire industry. Terrorists checked a bag packed with explosives onto a jumbo jet bound for Delhi. 329 people died. Since then, all checked bags must be matched to seated passengers before any flight can depart. Passengers wait as the minutes tick by. TWA 800. TWA 800, go ahead. We're reconciled. Passenger was on board the whole time. Roger that. Finally, at 8.19 p.m., TWA Flight 800 is airborne. TWA 800, climb and maintain 15,000. Climb thrust. TWA 800. Climb and maintain 15,000, leaving 13,000. Without warning, a powerful explosion tears the fuselage apart. The front third of the flame is gone. What's left continues sky engulfed in flames. Debris from TWA Flight 800 litters the water nearly 75 miles east of Manhattan. Search and rescue aircraft scan the sea. The National Transportation Safety Board, the FAA and the FBI are on the scene of the crash. As of now, no survivors have been found. With a nation in shock, Investigators begin the painstaking task of piecing together what happened to TWA 800. By the next morning, it's clear that none of the 230 people aboard TWA 800 have survived. It is the third deadliest airline disaster in US history. The NTSB will lead the investigation. The FBI believes they may already have an explanation for the disaster over Long Island. Three years earlier, in 1993, terrorists drove a bomb into the World Trade Center. Just over a year ago, Timothy McVeigh bombed the Federal Building in Oklahoma. Now the mid-air explosion of TWA 800 is also being linked to terrorism. Seven days into the investigation, the Ocean Salvage team makes a major find. The black boxes. Technicians are able to recover the data, but it gives investigators little to go on. They hear no cockpit alarms or signs of panic from the crew. NTSB investigators spend weeks carefully searching for any sign of foul play. They study wreckage from almost every part of the 230-foot-long plane. They find no signs of an explosive device. Investigators know the plane exploded in midair, but they are convinced this was not a terrorist act. They hope an analysis of the debris field can provide some answers. They divide the ocean crash site into three zones, 
The red zone, nearest the airport, is where the first pieces of wreckage hit the water. The yellow zone is where the front third of the airplane landed. The green zone contains everything else. The NTSB are certain they're making progress. But five weeks into their investigation, the FBI makes a shocking announcement. As a result of scientific analysis conducted by federal examiners, microscopic explosive traces of unknown origin have been found relating to TWA Flight 800. The statement directly contradicts the evidence found by the NTSB. The FBI tests show traces of RDX and PETN, chemicals used to make plastic explosives. The same chemicals used in the bombing of Pan Am Flight 103 eight years earlier. For the FBI, the evidence points in just one direction. NTSB investigators believe it was an exploding fuel tank that took down TWA 800. But they still don't know what sparked the blast. Jet fuel, in its liquid form, is not flammable. But when heated, the fuel starts to vaporize. When combined with oxygen already present in the tank, this vapor can become highly flammable. At the altitude where TWA 800 exploded, almost 14,000 feet, jet fuel needs to reach 96 degrees Fahrenheit before it can ignite. There's just one problem. According to Bowie, the fuel tanks housed inside the wings would never get hot enough for the fuel to vaporize. On the day of the fatal flight, the temperature at JFK Airport hit 87 degrees Fahrenheit, well below the flashpoint for jet fuel. Investigators examine the design schematics of the aircraft. An intriguing detail catches their eye. On TWA 800, the air conditioning units were working extra hard to keep the cabin cool on a hot evening. They decide to reproduce the exact conditions of the accident flight. The same type of plane, the same fuel load, and most importantly, exactly the same air conditioning units. It's a risky undertaking, filled with uncertainties. The test flight reaches the same altitude as TWA 800, the temperature readings are terrifying. The temperature in the tank hits 127 Fahrenheit, 30 degrees above the flashpoint. Investigators are now certain the fuel in the tanks of TWA 800 did become flammable. But before they can take the next step in their investigation, another media firestorm hits. 154 people living in the Long Island area where the missile testing was going on, saw one or two missiles rising in the air, and the number of them saw an explosion in the air. President John F. Kennedy's former press secretary, Pierre Salinger, claims he has proof that a missile hit TWA 800, and that the missile was fired by the US Navy. He claims the USS Normandy, a guided missile cruiser, accidentally targeted the 747. NTSB investigators need one last critical element of proof before they can be absolutely certain what caused one of the worst air disasters in US history. More than a year after the crash, investigators still don't know what could have caused a spark in the center wing fuel tank. Investigators make a stunning discovery. The discovery of bundled wires in a crumbling electrical system is a major step in the NTSB's search for a deadly spark. The full sequence of events is now clear. While idling at the gate for two and a half hours, the air conditioning system heats the fuel in the center wing tank. The liquid fuel turns to vapor its temperature rising well above the 96 degree ignition point. The flammable fuel and air mixture is a disaster waiting to happen. All it needs is a spark. In the plane's aging electrical system, high voltage wires are bundled with low voltage ones. Some are so warm they can short circuit. High voltage surges where it was never designed to go. 
in the blink of an eye, deadly voltage reaches the fuel probe inside the center wing tank. The NTSB's explosion theory is now rock solid and their ambitious reconstruction of TWA-800 is finally complete. The FBI finally agree with the NTSB on what happened to TWA-800. After more than four years of investigation, the NTSB recommends in its official report that all Boeing 747s undergo a review and repair of older wiring. Significant design modifications are also advised, including the addition of insulation between the fuel tanks and the air conditioning system. Though investigators have found the cause of the TWA-800 disaster, one question lingers. How did bomb residue get on the wreckage? Investigators also believe that witnesses who thought they saw a missile were actually seeing the flaming remains of the plane ascending skyward. <laughs>